So with this airplane, I'm going to expect to be a heavy nose because I've never landed one of these things before. Landing a 182 with G1000 for the first time and doing it at 8,500 feet. Power, power, power. Being a flatland pilot, mountain flying is something that's always interested me, but I also realized additional training is a must before I attempt it. Jason Miller from the Finer Points runs an amazing mountain flying course. And I was stoked to participate and cover it with my production team. Leading up to the trip, I'd been busy handling production logistics and had to suddenly snap into pilot mode upon commencement of the course. The other guys at the workshop were 100% pilots, but I was there to both make a film and do some awesome flight training. But I want to make it clear that these sorts of productions, I always do them with a safety pilot and I'm not acting as PIC. I never make elaborate films and act as PIC myself. Alright guys, have a great trip up. We'll all meet at Truckee then. I'd have been drinking from a fire hose regardless of the filmmaking distraction, but flying a 182 G1000 for the first time and dealing with the NorCal class Bravo departure was crazy. Alright, there we go. Good, a little more right rudder. It's a big heavy thing. And you got rudder trim if you need it. Oh wow, that's novel. Yeah. Where's my ball? Uh, the slab. Step on gotcha. the slab. Step on the slab. Right, right, right. On the slab. Traffic 12 to 1 o'clock and 2 miles eastbound 1,200 feet. Where's my ball? This is that, that should be like a book for yeah. the glass era. That's what I want to say. Where's my damn ball? Like in this plane, you know? Note that you have the yeah. preceding fairlane in sight. Outside Bravo and we'll uh, go to NoCal departure. One, two, three, seven, thanks. All right, that heading is good right there. In fact, uh, now that we're above 1,000, let's shallow the climb a little bit. We've got to stop before 1,500. Roger. There's Bravo airspace on top of us here. Charlie, one three, Charlie, traffic to 12 o'clock, a mile and a half, 1,100 feet is the previous departing Charlie. Okay, Roger that. Yeah, we have them in sight. Thanks. One seven one three, Charlie. All right. Charlie, one three, Charlie. Thank you. Remain on Bravo Bravo airspace. Contact NorCal departure. I'll advise them that you have a three lima in sight. Okay, we'll stay outside Bravo. Contact NorCal and uh, Wilco. Thanks for the help. We'll see you on Sunday. Our initial leg took us from San Carlos to Truckee, where we'd set up base camp for the weekend course. Super fun to fly with Steve, and you know, whenever I'm in the right seat, I've got my instructor hat on, and I'm trying to be an instructor, and it's kind of interesting with, with flight chops happening, because I can see that Steve is divided. There's some half that's managing the filmmaking aspect, and some half that's managing the flying, and so it's a little, it's a little tricky to give a fair and honest assessment as a teacher about what I think he can improve on just because I'm not sure how much of, what percentage of his processor is pilot. So do you still need the iPad back there, James? No, I okay. got a roar key. I will take it if it's working now. I just need to know if I'm allowed to ask you guys to, to fix it. One sec. And Steve's really open about that. You know, he understands that that's the situation, that it's kind of half filmmaker, half pilot, and those roles bounce around. Yeah, so I think that he's, uh, he's obviously doing that with an instructor in the right seat, which is super smart from a pilot's perspective, right, and judgment as a pilot. Uh, but we can't bust the Bravo, so, just, and so there's a lot of airspace to sort of manage getting out of here. Above 2000. So if there's anything I noticed that's not right that he might have missed, he might not miss that on a normal flight in the Super Cub when, when you're not there, or when the Flight Chops crew is not there. Roger, 182 Bravo Golf. Now what I did do is set it up with the Stratus. Is it, do you need to, no, you're on it. You go so should it get, so if I roll, it's gonna roll? Oh my God, that's cool. This was my first time seeing fully functional four-flight synthetic vision with the Stratus 2 connected, and James had a laptop at the back seat live capturing it. And on that note, this month's contest is worth 500 bucks, including prizes from Four Flight, the Finer Points, and a pivot case. Uh, is that for 1713 Charlie? That's number 13 Charlie, affirmative. Okay, Roger that. Looking for the traffic, uh, 1713 Charlie. Uh, traffic. Roger. You got him? Oh. Uh, Where are we looking for him? Uh, 11 o'clock low. It's going to go ring rock so you can see us. I do not see anybody at 11 o'clock low. Um, there he is, got him. All well, factor, beautiful, thanks. Yep. 1713 Charlie, is traffic in sight. Number 13 Charlie, rather. Clear to climb through the San Francisco Class Bravo airspace. Clear to climb through the San Francisco Class Bravo, 1713 Charlie. All right, go right up to 95 then on course. So he really knew kind of what we wanted. Despite my best effort to get into pilot mode, I was still kind of distracted getting the filmmaking quirks worked out. So I was still not fully on board for this leg and getting into the mountains as we arrived into Truckee, I definitely felt completely task saturated. You know, when it came to, to Steve's flying, I think there were two great moments, two great takeaways. And one was on the first night where we're just getting used to high density altitude operations. There are a lot of visual illusions. So the ground is no longer flat, but we've got terrain and other things to deal with. And Steve's first pass was just kind of 
you know, improvising kind of all out of whack. And I think a reminder, and this is great for all pilots, again, to, to just remind people about the basics, to orient yourself off the runway, just pretend you're back in Canada, that's any runway like any other runway, and do the same things that you always do. Make a power change at the beam position, apply flaps, and start a downline. What's my approach speed going to be? It's going to be 70 knots. Uh, before landing, seatbelts, fuels on both, mixture will get, props higher, PM, yeah, taxi light will be good. Rebel Golf, taxi on the golf right. landing from checklist from complete. So I'm going to be getting onto the, sorry, 45 to downwind, then I'm going to get onto the base and final. Uh, right now you can do that. Tokyo Tahoe traffic, uh, 1713 Charlie is inbound on a 45 from the gateway, right traffic runway 20, Truckee Tahoe. Good. So with this airplane, I'm going to expect it to be a heavy nose because I've never landed one of these things before. So Correct. I'm going to do a very slow transition. I'm going to bring it in with my nose down, transition, and then level, level, level. I'm not going to try to flare aggressively. Um, I'll help you out with that because here's the thing about these planes. Um, and let me actually fly for a second and tell you this, because this is real important. And uh, Rich, this will be a good review for you. The 182 in its flat pitch sits nose up. I don't know if you noticed on the ground, but we couldn't really see anything. So the tendency is to bang the nose wheel. Everybody bangs the nose wheel, because when you think you're level, you're not exactly level. Okay. All right, so um, I'll watch you on it. If I don't think the nose is high enough, I'll tell okay, you so then I, I, if, I, if I need to err on the side of being nose up, I'll do that. All right, here you go. You got, I got it? it? Yep. All right, that's where we're Oh, so let's go. Three six kilo. You wanna, do you want to just go for it? Do you want me to talk you through it all? Well, I'll go for it. So I'm going to add some flaps. There will be differences, but if you're not starting from some form that you know and recognize, it's just improv all the way down. Um, and that usually leads to bad approaches. What do we want? 20? Truck to yeah, that's fine. Go right to 20. And, uh, there we go. We've got terrain at 12 o'clock. So yeah, I'm turning. Turning. Hey, truck traffic, it's uh, 713. Charlie is uh, base to final, runway 20. Traffic 182, power back. Golf all the way out of runway 20. Sorry, am, really I not, am I not keeping the nose down enough? Yeah, 60 knots yeah. on the speed there, right? So, um, yeah, so I uh, just want to make sure you keep that flying speed. I feel like I'm already flat. I'm already too low. Do you agree? Uh, no. I want to be steep, don't I? Not exactly. You don't have to be steep, but don't let the nose come up is the big thing. So we want 70 knots as a bottom. Yeah, so we're already slow. I feel I feel like I wanted to be steeper than this because of that briefing. Uh, just go long. Aim for those thousand foot markers. Forget the beginning of the runway. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? That's what Howard was saying. So I want to be having to bring it in with this much power. Is that because we're in such a high density altitude? Um, it's partially due to that we're heavy, but you don't need that much. We have too much power now. Before departure, we'd done a pretty thorough briefing as to what to expect when we arrived in Truckee. Obviously there's a lot of specific things related to the mountain arrival, one of which is that there's a bit of a small cliff right off the threshold, uh, so if the wind is strong on runway 20, it'll actually create a downdraft, which is what I was worried about, and I kind of ended up flying into it. 75 is acceptable too, with gusty conditions like this. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. 65 to 75, we've got plenty of runway. Um, if our wheels aren't down by the halfway yeah, point, we we're going to go around on it. So this actually ended up looking like a pretty good approach, but I got a little shallower than maybe I should have for the downdraft, and I was slow to react to it, so Jason had to help me out. Yeah, okay, you're looking good. You're looking fine. Power, power, power. There you go. Really? Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Is good. that because you felt the sink? Yep. Jesus, sorry. That's Ooh, terrible. Is there a little power, little power? Oh, I'm behind you, Chucky. Roger, thank you. Power out. See how the nose came down like a second after the main? Yeah. We'll work on that tonight. <laughs> the nose loves to drop on this thing. <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect that balloon, man. I'll go to the end. Winds are gusty up here right now. We'll see yeah, what they are when nice. we land. Um, but we can... That's that's where we're going, all those trees over there, guys. Cool, man. And, uh, all right, how you doing, James? How was that? It was good. I, I, was, I had to make sure that I, I wasn't looking at the screen too much, so I didn't yeah, yak all over That was an shoulders. interesting landing, boy. So. See what I mean about how high the nose is? Yeah. Right, so in a Cessna 172, this would be like a, sh like a soft field takeoff, right? Yeah. And in a 182, that's, this area is golden, and we're going to learn tonight like how to really like hold your, your eyes here and see everything you need to see. See, that guy even did it, eh? Did he balloon? Yeah. Yeah, because the winds are, did you hear what they were? They were like four gusting 15 or something? Yeah, so it's a big gust variable. Yeah. Exactly. Like there's a dirt devil beside the windsock. Yeah, look at that windsock. It's going to tie itself in a knot. <laughs> like I have to watch the windsock and fly. I know, right? <laughs> so it's like you can't just do what you do sometimes, just park it. That doesn't apply. Yeah, no, definitely. Whew. 
I actually felt like I had to dynamically change my crosswind inputs for taxi. So this was definitely a case of flying it all the way to parking. First thing that the mechanics look at when you buy a 182 is the firewall to see if it's been bent by <laughs> nose wheel impacts. The very first thing. That's what happens, eh? Yeah, like 50% oh, yeah. of the time. So is that telling us the density altitude? That's yes. like, yes. everybody wake up. That's right, it's, it's 8,500 before you even start. So the course itinerary was to do some midday seminars followed by evening pattern work when the wind wasn't so crazy. There were so many pilots that were leaving the ground upwind, turning crosswind, and then turning downwind and crashing the airplane that the majority of pilots thought they were losing lift. There was a, a myth that sort of developed that said, well, of course, because when you turn downwind, there's less airflow over your wings, right? These seminars were awesome, and each of the instructors that Jason brought on board had specific content to offer. I'll share more of these tidbits in future episodes that come from the awesome stuff we shot on this trip. Your sight pictures mean nothing. When people are turning and the ground just starts rushing by so fast, they almost feel as though they're falling and they would pull. They would forget about their indicated airspeed. Aside from gust factors, the airplane feels no change in wind at all. If you're pitched up and you find yourself slow, you're gonna have to shallow it. And if that means there's no climb for a second, that means there's no climb for a second, but you need that indicated airspeed to get the result you want. Um, and there will be visual illusions, I think just sort of pay attention to them is the bottom line to that thought. And that was the advice that I really took to heart because flying in the mountains here was a really huge visual change for me and I needed to ignore those illusions. Anyway, we uh, split up into our separate airplanes and went and started doing pattern work for the evening. Each training airplane had two students that would swap seats. And of course, we always shut the engine down before anyone gets in or out. And in my airplane, it was Rich and I that took turns watching each other's lessons. So there's just no, there is no full, we don't go full rich up here basically. Like. Oh, hardly ever, never. Yeah, yeah okay. we're not, we're not, we're up at altitude basically, we're 8,300 feet up. We'll cover high density altitude takeoff in another episode. This one is just going to focus on landings. We left the film crew on the ground to get some awesome footage. So I could focus on being 100% pilot for the evening training. And I found my groove. Actually, we kind of are a bit high, right? Yeah, yeah, you're looking good. This is looking great. And then you could always add more flaps if you wanted. You got another. Okay, we'll try it. You go for it. Good. Keep your nose down, though. Same sight picture. I'm on that'll it. just shade off speed. I'm on it. Looking great. All right, excellent. Now, in the round out zone, about 30 feet off the ground, gently transition to the round out. Good. Look all the way down. Runway. 143 Lima. Is turning away. Slowly Lima protect zero. your nose. Pull up your nose every time it sinks. Pull, pull, pull. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Nice. Yeah. And getting it back, so. right? So once we got Steve doing the same thing that he always does when he flies and just trying to ignore the things that are different, um, his, his landings got great. And that's where things really started to lock together. I did one more to prove that wasn't a fluke. See how that got you where you want to be? Yeah. Right. And now, now you're in a good spot, good speed. And just go power to idle and hold her off. Ballooned it. I think getting back to something that feels more normal, right? Like we don't yep. we don't realize how much we build upon what we've started with. Yeah. I think yeah, that's a great the learning. Uh, one three Charlie is clear on my way. Charlie. Great learning experience. The more different things get, if it's a Cirrus, then go back to flying a normal pattern, right? Or if it's a mountain airport, yes. Go back to flying a normal pattern. The following day, we applied our lessons. And Truckee traffic, it's Skylane 1713 Charlie over North Star. We're headed to Donner Lake to do the gateway arrival, and we're expecting runway 20 Truckee. Cool. The one thing you might want to let Altitude. them know. Yeah, there were 11,000, yeah. right? And we're at 11,000 feet for 1713 Charlie Truckee. All right, cool. The challenge here was to apply last night's training. This leg had been two hours of cruising up above 12,000 feet through amazing mountain passes. Go to the right side of the canyon, try to surf the updrafts, right? Watch your altitude. So here's where we're descending and the downdraft. We want to make sure we try to catch those updraft sides. There you go. That's the current we want right there. Boom. Yeah. All right? Wow, um, it just went from 1,000 feet per minute down to 1,000 feet per minute up. Now that's going to be its own episode. But for now, I need to get my head back into landing configuration. And track of traffic, it's uh, Skyline 1713 Charlie, just on the 45 degree to the downwind for runway. 2-0, Truckee, full stop. All right, let's go downwind here. 
Well, remember how that worked for you yesterday when you did your normal pattern too, right? Like just at the beam position? Yeah, that one worked well for me. Yeah, right? Be great. Yeah. All right, I gotta get back into flying an airplane instead of cruising right, an airplane. Downwind there, toward that mountain is downwind, that little bump. There yep. you go, there right. you go, good, keep it turning. Yeah, right, you're a beam. Good. That's good. Tow power back. Yep. Get some flaps in flaps it. And look for 90, so set a down line. Yeah, good, there you go. And then look at the runway. So everything's oriented off that runway. All right, 80 for the turn. Yeah, keep yeah, it 80, keep, it down keep that down line. Yeah. Yep. All right, beautiful. And then this is the key position, right? This is where you look and decide high, low, fast, slow. Truck key traffic. A uh, tiny down. bit low, but yeah, I'm not hating it. I'm going to cut in a bit. Miles. When this guy stops Three. talking, I'll make my base call, which is probably going to be a final call. I'm getting a bit of backfire. Do you feel it's lug, like it's chunky? Feel that? Yeah, no, we're okay. Here, just your power's yours. Um, let's make a call because someone's coming in for 2 9. And truck traffic, it's uh, Skyline 1713 Charlie is base to final 2 0. Full stop truck. Beautiful. Looking good. I'm going to go full flaps. Alright, good. Me too. Point options 322, Truck Unicom. Go ahead, for options 322. Good afternoon. How long is your aircraft staying with us today? We're staying overnight. This approach looks good. Yep, I'm okay morning. with Steve. I like and it. We'll need a ride to uh, the Hampton Inn. Copy that. Do you slip these things ever? Or just oh, no. yeah. You can slip right, them. Yeah, I'm going to be able to slip it in. Just a bit. A little bit fast, a little bit high, but I don't hate it. All right. Good, you look good. Just protect the nose. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, sunk more than I expected there. All right. That's so much better than where we were yesterday. Yeah. Too. I love that. Feel good about that. All right, guys. All right, good day of flying. Time. Yeah, that was awesome. We're going to open the You all right? Okay, give James some air. That was Please. a sweet landing. And I remember from my perspective, I think part of the key is just doing what you know in the pattern. Right. Right? Like, you, you were taught well. Yeah. This isn't very different. It's just a little different. Yeah. We shot a ton of footage on this adventure, and there's a lot more content coming, so stay tuned for that. And if you're interested in mountain flying, you definitely have to check out Jason's course. There's details in the description. So thanks again to the supporters on Patreon, and thanks so much to the sponsors. We've got another $500 monthly contest prize, so check out flightchops.com for details on that. And keep your flight chops sharp. Cool, a little more to the right here. Sorry, I don't know what you're looking at, but I'm looking at the center line. <laughs> I'm not looking at the center line. I'm looking at where, I'm still kind of in shock about where I am. <laughs>